Welcome everybody, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider, and this is macOS Big Sur, Apple's most recent biggest update to macOS in a long time. And there is a ton to dig through, and in this video, we're going to hit kind of those big points, the high points, look at the design, and a lot of the changes they've made throughout the system and the different apps. So let's go ahead and dive in to macOS Big Sur. So here we are on our Mac, and you can see already that it looks vastly different. A lot of the UI has been changed and tweaked. There's a new icon set pretty much throughout the OS. They're really building on their SF uh, symbol pack they brought over, SF Symbols 2, they brought from iOS and iPadOS here to the Mac, so it creates a more cohesive experience across all of their different platforms. You can see so many of the different design changes they made here is just basics within Finder, just the way things look, the way the iconography is laid out, the way the search bar expands, so many changes. You can see changes to the menu bar, really there's been a lot changed in how the UX looks here. It really is an improvement, at least in our opinion. We love the look of this, though some things are a little wishy-washy. So if we're looking at kind of menu bars up here, there's really a lack of contrast in some situations. There's a lot of transparencies and there's, while things are spaced more, some things can feel inconsistent. Like the QuickTime icon here in the dock, a lot of the icons look great, but QuickTime just kind of looks odd as well as a few other ones. Either way, the whole dock has been reimagined and all new icons throughout the system. We even have an updated menu bar here. You can see it is more translucent, it blends more into the background, and we have a lot of new icons and all of the menus have kind of been reworked and redesigned and they look fantastic. Apple has really done a good job of bringing things from iOS and iPadOS to the Mac, including Control Center. Here you can see everything on your Mac that you kind of would need to. It's a really new way to control your Mac, including toggling off Do Not Disturb, adjusting your keyboard brightness, jumping into those AirPlay displays there, and when they are here, you can take them out of your menu bar so you don't need to be have all these in your menu bar like you used to before so you can kind of hide some of those icons and clean things up a little bit not only that but you can drag and drop things around very easily including pulling things from control center and dropping them right where you want now notification center has been reworked as well notifications are now grouped which oh my gosh thank goodness this happened on ios a long time ago and we are thrilled to see that coming to the mac of course we also have the new widgets that we just saw for ios and ipad os for those widgets are now updated here on the mac as well and then they look great widgets come in three different sizes small medium and large you can see all those sizes preview them third-party developers can get in here and create their own widgets that are going to work this way and they are very easy to go and place in so if we want to add maybe the podcast one, and I know I already have a podcast one there, but we can actually go ahead and remove that by tapping on that little minus button in that top left-hand corner of the existing podcast one, and then we can replace it with maybe the larger version of it. So I want to really see that uh, HomeKit Insider right there at the top, like the new Dub Dub 20 special that we just released. That's here at the top, and I can jump in there and play that right away. So new widgets look pretty much amazing here on macOS and look very familiar coming from iOS and iPadOS. Many apps really do have a lot of tweaks coming in store. Here is the updated News app. News has been built on Catalyst and it's been improved, taking advantage of the new features of Catalyst. A lot of the apps, as you can see, have these new full height sidebars, a lot of updated iconography, new Listen Now pages here inside of the podcast app. Again, we can jump into the HomeKit Insider if you know what I mean. And here is the Music app again, this refreshed Now or Listen Now view. Uh, with recommendations here at the top. Everything looks really nice. And as you saw, we were looking at Control Center a few moments ago. You can see there's now a now playing option right there in Control Center. So we can go ahead and pause what we're listening to, skip to the next track, or just jump right back to the music app using that arrow on the far right. One app that got a lot of changes this time around is the Home app. So now, actually, you can have third-party Home apps on the Mac. So we're going to see a lot of those coming once Catalyst or once uh, Mac OS Big Sur is released. But the Home app itself has been revamped. It looks a lot sleeker than before. We have this menu along that left-hand side. We have those new status bars along the top. And we have a lot of changes in store for HomeKit Secure Video. Now, you can get notifications, like if a camera goes offline or becomes reachable again. You can create zones for HomeKit cameras. You can use facial recognition to get notified if someone is there. If someone's ringing the doorbell, it'll pop up here on your Mac saying, you know, so and so is at your front door. And it's actually able to pull that facial recognition based on the images in your photos library, anyone that you've identified there. So, a lot of great changes coming to HomeKit for the Mac. And Safari. Safari has its biggest update 
pretty much ever. We really need a full video just dedicated to Safari changes, but just to kind of touch on a few, there's a new revamped kind of starting out page. You can change the background, add your own backgrounds, and control exactly what you want to see there, whether you want to see your iCloud tabs, your favorites, or recently visited, any of that. Tabs have been reworked. You can see more of them at once, and you can get little previews just by hovering over them so you know what you're going to jump into. There's a new privacy report option. So in this case, apple.com, this website did not contain or did not contact any trackers. That's really good to know. And if we go over here to YouTube and check that privacy report again, in this case, it did catch two trackers and it prevented those. And that includes double click and Google Analytics. Safari just overall is cleaner faster and better than ever. There's also built-in translations for pages. It is significantly faster, 50% faster than Safari, and it consumes less battery than before. It's really incredible how much they've updated Safari, but we will check back in on Safari in a dedicated video. Continuing, we're going to look at Maps. It's a brand new, fully-fledged Maps app that's actually been updated using Catalyst this time, which is, again, Apple's platform that kind of merges their iPad apps onto the Mac. And you can see we have features like Flyover, and we even have a Look Around, which is kind of like a Google Street View version, but for Apple Maps, if we go back to New York City, where we had the Flyover views that we just took a look at, that kind of 3D Flyover, we have Look Around, so we can actually go down the streets and see what's you know going on in New York City. There are new guides that you can create and get from curated sources. There is also options for routing with EV charging stations. There is cycling instructions, so if you want to travel somewhere, not just walking, not just biking, not using public transit, but you want to use bikes, that is an option, and you can filter those through whether you want to include busy roads, or if you want to make sure you aren't going upstairs, or anything like that, that can all be taken into account when you're using cycling instructions. Messages, again, too, has been rebuilt. You can see we have these pinned conversations on the top. You can swipe left and right here. There's much better search. You can pin these conversations up to nine of them. As you're typing, there's a bunch of changes here. We can send these conversations or these messages with uh, new Memoji stickers. We can add GIFs and search for images. There's a new image picker to go back to your photos library. Clicking on that like app icon there on the left, you can see there's the emoji stickers that we were talking about. There was also where you get to the GIF library, see what's trending, and we can pull that way. There's those options for searching everything, and even message effects have finally come to the Mac. Message effects have been around for a while over on iOS and iPadOS, but of course they finally made their way to the Mac. They've really done a great job of bringing the Mac up to snuff um, on par with what we're seeing for iPhones and iPads. Here you can see some of those messages here on your big screen. They look incredible. They come with sounds and uh, animation and everything. They look great how they've done them. There's also better support for group conversation, including naming them, applying images, and even having threaded replies and mentions. Finally, that lands us in the Photos app. The Photos app has been changed a little bit. It definitely has a different layout than it did in the past. Everything has really just been updated again. New iconography there matches across the platforms, and they made a few changes in how you can edit. There's some more robust options here, and their automatic retouch has been retooled and is more powerful than ever, and is relying on more machine learning to make it more accurate and seamless as you are adjusting those photos. Navigation is much more easy and fluid than it was in the past. We can add context to photos and videos by adding captions. The improved retouch tool that we talked about, there's expanded video capabilities. You can edit videos more capably now, and you can now add vibrance effects to photos and adjust the intensity of filters and portrait lighting effects. Finally, there's a more relevant selection of photos and videos within memories, a larger selection of music tracks that adapt to those memories, and enhance video stabilization when playing back those memory movies. Mac OS Big Sur is a massive step forward, not to mention the fact that it will be supporting Apple's new own silicon inside of these instead of Intel processors. I want to know what you guys think. Reach me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU and stay tuned for more Mac OS Big Sur videos as well as iOS, tvOS, Apple Watch, and everything else. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.